And now, from the man who has only five grams of fat per serving, it's snack time. To know true fear, to understand what it's like to live in the body of a of a, of a fraidy cat, of a hypochondriac, of a scaredy cat, you have to know what it's like to be my Aunt Lauren. And Aunt Lauren is afraid of everything. She's, and you know how dogs sometimes they say, you know, take after the personalities of their masters? Well, Aunt Lauren has a big Doberman pincher named Megan. I mean, Megan looks scary. People on the street, like, run. Megan is as big a wimp as her master, Aunt Lauren. Aunt Lauren is such a fraidy cat that she made her Doberman a fraidy cat. It's so funny to watch her Doberman. A poodle comes up the street, and the Doberman is terrified. You know, so Aunt Lauren, lighten up. If there's a thunderstorm, Aunt Lauren goes to the bathroom and sits on the toilet, like practically pooping herself in fear. Just, and that's the worst place in the house to be because of the plumbing, but no, she won't listen. And, you know, poor Aunt Lauren has a nasal voice. And she calls my mother recently and she says, Susan! It's horrible. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid. Oh, it's horrible, Susan. And, Aunt, and my mom is like, Lauren, honey, sweetie, calm down. What are you trying to tell me? Honey, breathe. Breathe. And Aunt Lauren's like, I have rats in my house. And, and you know, it's Aunt Lauren having rats is like you and I having a serial killer living Somewhere in your house, you know, the amount of fear we would feel going to bed every night knowing there's a serial killer in our house is the same amount of fear that Aunt Lauren has knowing that there are rats lurking. In her mind, each rat has like, you know, Freddy Krueger gloves on their hands, little miniature versions, and poisonous teeth, then they just can't wait till she falls asleep to like stink their teeth into her neck and kill her and suck her blood out of her body. And I'm sure these other thoughts that go through her head, she is terrified. And her dog Megan is terrified of the rats too. So the two of them are cowards, boarded up like Night of the Living Dead, like there's a siege of rats, and she's on her touch. She won't even put her feet on the floor. She's chain-smoking. Well, she always chain-smokes. And her dog is up on the couch with her, and the two of them are sitting up there like Frady cats, just looking every time there's a noise to see what's going to attack them. And it is so funny. And I'm like, Aunt Lauren, the rat is probably as scared of you as you are of it. No, it wants to kill me, Terry. It wants me dead. But, you know, she just won't listen. And then mom related story. She's like, you know, your Aunt Lauren was always afraid of things, Terry. As a little girl, Grandma would take the three of us daughters, Aunt Lauren, Aunt Jane, and myself, to the doctors for our shots and our checkups. And Aunt Lauren was just so afraid of getting her her flu shot or her shots in general that the doctor would have to chase her around the table, around the examination table, and we'd all have to chase her and hold her down. And the nurse would have to literally hold her arms behind her back to give her the shot, and she'd scream the whole time. Well, Aunt Lauren hasn't changed a lot since then. She still needs to be chased by the doctor to get a shot. And the woman is 50 years old. Well, luckily, soon she's going to get old. She's going to slow down. The doctor will be able to outrun. Her. But anyway, so she's towered up in her house, and she calls Exterminator, and she wants this guy to come loaded up like he's Rambo and assassinate the rats. She wants him to, come, to have World War III with her rats. I want them dead. I want, it's like Snow White and the Queen, I want you to bring the rats' hearts to me and prove that they're dead. Bring your little rat heads on a silver platter. I want to see them slain. And we're like, Aunt Lauren, listen to yourself. Get a grip, lady. Pull yourself together. You've got to get a grip on yourself. But she won't listen. So the exterminator comes over, and all he does is sprinkle some powder around, and he says, well, it's going to take about a week. You see, the rats will run through this poisonous powder, and once they lick themselves, they'll die. And she goes, how long does it take for the rats to lick themselves? And he goes, oh, five days to a week. They're very dirty creatures. So he leaves her alone with her poisonous powder, and now she's afraid that somehow she's going to lick the powder. Aunt Lauren, you're not going to accidentally lick poisonous powder. It just doesn't happen, lady. Lady, you've got to get a grip on yourself. You are becoming far too grand, far too crazy. But she, there's no warning her. So everyone out there, I need your help. 
email me today if you have any any ideas for Aunt Lauren to rid herself of that deadly man-eating rat that ends such her home. Cut.